friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Marissa. I did the Disney College program spring 2019 and I worked in Epcot and Spaceship Earth and Epcot Center attractions. So I've always wanted to do a Q&A video about the DCP but I felt like I didn't know enough yet or I didn't have enough people wanting to know things but I've been getting so many questions lately in my DMs and in my comments and I try to answer them right away but I thought that if I just made like one video with a couple of questions that would be really helpful for some of you guys so these are just totally random questions that some of you guys sent to me so hopefully if you're watching this and sent a question hopefully I answered it I'm pretty sure I did every question um, that was sent to me Yep, I'm doing every single question that was sent to me on my community post. So, also, something huge that I saw on my analytics page is that 78% of the people watching my videos are not subscribed. So, if you like my videos, like my style, and want to know more about my experience in the college program, or just want to follow me for my life, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and also the thumbs up button, because it helps my channel a lot. Let's just get into the first question of the video. So the first person wanted to know how to get into the parks for free. How does all of that work? And also what documents you need to bring. So this is really, really important. And what you're gonna be doing for your entire program is just spending time in the parks. And also you need your documents to even participate on the first day you get there. So listen up if you don't know the answers to these questions. I'll start with which documents you need because I know that this is extremely important. So, you need to fill out I-9 documents and that's how you are legally allowed to work at Walt Disney World. I personally brought my US driver's license along with my social security card. So you can bring both of those things as one option or you can bring a government issued passport. So you either bring your driver's license and social security card or your passport. When you get accepted and they tell you all about the registration process, they are going to send you a whole file with legitimate information about these things. So if you don't even trust the words I'm saying, definitely just stick with that document because they tell you everything you need. But I would strongly consider bringing your driver's license, your social security card, or your passport. But I actually brought all three just in case because I'm paranoid like that and I knew I'd be coming a long way from home. and I. Imagine forgetting something like that and then having to just start over or be, you know, delayed to start your program because they wouldn't be like, all right, go home, you're out. They would be like, okay, you're going to start on the next start date or something like that. I'm sure this happens all the time with people, but don't be one of those people. The funny story is I brought everything I needed and I still had an issue. So if you watched my check-in video, which I'm going to put right up there or here, I don't know, I went to casting on check-in day. And I went through fingerprinting, I filled out some forms, had to show my things there, but then I just left and no one told me I needed to do anything else. You do all your fingerprinting and stuff in one area and then you have to go somewhere else to do your I-9 documents. And I did not do that. It bit me in the butt because I had to drive to the Social Security Office of Orlando, which was like an hour away, and I, was, I just got there a day ago. My family just left. I was so stressed out and I had to apply for a new social security card to be sent to me and if I didn't give them my social security card by um, whatever day then I wouldn't be able to work or something like that. So I had everything I needed but when I was done with casting I gave my mom everything back because I didn't want to hold it with me because I didn't trust myself I thought I would lose it so my mom was on a plane with my documents and I'm freaking out because I realized I needed those. So double and triple check when you go to casting that you completed every step you needed and then you leave. Okay? Don't be like me. Second part of that question is how to get into the parks for free. So that's probably the best part about this whole entire experience is going to the parks for free and I know everyone is eager to do that the second they land there or drive there or whatever. You can't do it right away. So the first couple days that you're there, you're checking in, you're getting to know your roommates, you're moving everything in, and you're not allowed access to the parks yet. So that's why a lot of people go resort hopping, which is what me and my roommates did, or um, you could go to Disney Springs as much as you want. You don't need any kind of ticket to access that. 
So when you go to traditions, this is the first time you're able to go into the parks. So usually when everyone's done with traditions, they take the bus to Magic Kingdom and everybody is just hanging out there because they're finally able to go. At traditions, you're going to get your blue ID. That's what this is right here. This is your golden ticket to show that you're a cast member. You need it every single time you go to a park, every single time you go to work. Do not lose this. So you have this, and when you're done with traditions, you have to go to guest services at whatever park you choose to go to, and you show them this. And in return, they're gonna give you a little park hopper for the day. And that's just, you know, a temporary one to use for that day, or any other day that you go to a park, you have to go back and get another park hopper. It's only good until the end of that day when that park closes. And you don't have to do this for a very long time, because you're gonna actually get mailed a main gate pass, which looks like this. This one says self-admission pass, and it comes to the service center of your housing complex, or if you're living off campus for some reason, or not in a housing complex, it'll go to your mail box. And once you have this, you're set. This is what gets you into every park from that point on. If you happen to lose this, you can use this one again to do the original process, but just don't lose this. And I highly recommend buying a magic band or taking an old magic band and linking this up with it so that you don't even need to bring this. You just boop, boop, boop. You either bring this or your magic band, you're good to go. Next question, somebody asks what my previous job experience was that I put on my Disney application. So I haven't worked too many jobs in my life and it's kind of funny the way it ended up working out. So what I did was I used to work at this store in my town and so, you know, obviously I had customer service experience because I was working the cash register, I was helping people with what they needed, helping with returns, whatever. So that's obviously great to have. And while you're listing these things on your application, you want to put, you know, you want to put the skills that you've learned at these jobs. So say like great with customer service or helped people with, I don't know, <laughs> help people with problems and solve them, you know, rationally and patiently. You know what they want to hear. If you work at Disney, they want someone who is good at making customers happy with their product. That's basically what you need to say. So if you have any kind of job, even if you worked at like, you know, like a Starbucks or any a restaurant you're helping with customer service because you're just keeping the guests of wherever you work happy so any job that you've worked you can probably manipulate into adding those skills to it because you definitely use those skills in, the, in your job so I worked at a little store and then I also worked in Times Square at this National Geographic exhibit and it was kind of like a virtual reality tour where I took people who visited through an underwater virtual reality experience so many words. Um, and so it was under the big company of Times Square Attractions. So that was honestly amazing that I got that right before Disney. So I was basically an ocean tour guide who took guests through this experience while narrating the whole process. Kind of like a spiel, like it's so similar to something like Jungle Cruise where a tour guide takes you through the whole attraction. Wait a minute. So when I did the actual application, I didn't have that job yet when I had to write my jobs. So I only was able to tell that on my phone interview. So I put my little store experience on there and then I also put um, my theater company in my town. I used to stage manage and be in charge of the kids program and I wrangled the kids and I, that's what you call it when they're like backstage and stuff. And I just said that I was really good at working with kids and directing a whole group of people and public speaking in general. And so if you, have jobs and you don't know how on earth Disney could think that you'd be good at that, try and fit in customer experience and making guests happy and also um, public speaking skills and being able to have a whole group of people know rules or conditions. Okay, does that make any sense? Now I'm going to talk about my application process. So someone asked how long my whole application process took. So, it took around two weeks total from applying to being accepted, which is so lucky because I know a ton of people that had to wait months and months to even get their first application to a web interview. So, I did my general application on August 21st of 2018. I immediately got the email about 15 minutes later saying that I was scheduled for a web-based interview and I was in a place where I didn't have much service at all and I didn't have my laptop with me so thank god I was going home in like a couple days because they give you like a time limit 
You have to complete the web-based interview within three days to continue on. So general application submitted on August 21st. Web-based interview I did on August 23rd. And that one is awesome because as soon as you hit submit at the end, it either tells you, cool, you get a phone interview or you're no longer in consideration. So <laughs> when I finished it, I got schedule your phone interview. So I scheduled my phone interview for August 29th, which was about a week later. And exactly a week after the phone interview, I was accepted. I got the email, the subject said congratulations, and I was like, oh my god. And I was accepted for attractions. And then this person also asks if it's bad if it says that your application is received and it stays that way. Honestly, if it stays that way, you are still in the clear. The only thing you do not want to see is NLIC, no longer in consideration, because that means you're absolutely not being considered for this time. And try again next time. So as long as it says application received or under review or something like that, you are still good. Just hang tight. It's going to take a while or you might get lucky and it might not take long at all like me. I got very, very lucky and this also was my first time applying. Somebody else asks if I regret packing anything or if I wish I packed something else. And what I mentioned in my last video is that I didn't really need to pack belts because I don't wear them in my normal life. I packed it to wear with my costume, but costuming actually gives you a belt anyway and you have to wear that one. Something else that I needed to pack more of was um, <laughs> cold medicines. You're gonna get sick a lot. You're gonna work long hours, you're gonna be around kids who don't wash their hands, you're gonna be around other workers who just get sick and everyone's touching everything and it's gross. And I got sick a couple times when I was there, so I needed lots of Dayquil. I actually don't take Dayquil. Um, a Z pack, which is antibiotics. Uh, <laughs> so make sure you take all those things. Take anti-itch cream because there's going to be mosquitoes and you're going to get a lot of bites. Take pretty much any kind of medicine you think you'll need because you will probably end up needing it. And if you don't have that much room to pack it, you can always buy it at the many pharmacies nearby. But if you just want to be prepared without having to go out, pack a little bit more medicine. Um, I, I packed a couple of coats and I would just say pack one that you could wear because it was really only cold for the first week or two and it was I was able to manage it and you're gonna be at work most of the time anyway and you're gonna be wearing the coat that they give you in costuming which is kind of ugly <laughs> so yeah don't bring too many coats because they take up a lot of space um, and then also instead of bringing like a bunch of small bags and that you'll change up bring one work bag that you take only to work and then bring another bag that you take only to the parks and then if you think you're going out in, in like Orlando or something, bring just like a little wristlet or something that you... I keep saying or something. Bring a little wristlet. Someone else asks what my favorite memory of the DCP was. And this is taking me a long time to think about, but I would have to say the coolest part about it was when my family got to visit me and when Tony got to visit me. And I was able to show them Disney in a way I never experienced it because I knew so much more about it and I knew all the ins and outs, all the secrets and they were just so excited to see me there in my element and I got to show them where I worked like they've never been there before <laughs> and I was like, this is my workplace, patient birth. And it was just like a whole new Disney experience. That was definitely my favorite part because I know I'll remember that part forever along with so many other parts about it. I can't even begin to choose but I think that one definitely stands out. This person asks how you choose your roommates when you're over 21 and is there a rule that you have to live in 21 and older dorms? So I can only speak to when I did it because I feel like they change their rules all the time and it could have changed, but I'm pretty sure that you're able to live with whoever you want, no matter their age. So I was over 21 and so were all my roommates and that's just how it worked out. Um, since I wasn't under 21, I didn't really worry about that and I don't know all the rules, but I'm pretty sure that you can live with someone of any age and someone in the comments, please correct me if I'm wrong, but then you just have to follow the policies a lot more strictly so you can't have alcohol in your room if you're living with people under 21. It's just not allowed. So you'd have to go somewhere else to do your alcohol drinking. <laughs> like a grandma. Um, so you would just have to be extra careful and if you don't want to get involved with that and you're really not into alcohol, then definitely room with people who are under 21 because then you won't have that issue with roommates. And if you're over 21 
and you don't want to deal with getting in trouble, definitely live with 21 year olds because we're over. And then you won't have to worry about anything. Because we were all over 21 and we had alcohol in our apartment like all the time. So it was fine. And also we had no issues with it. Nobody ever came to like, it's not like college where there's RAs just coming around. What questions do you ask the interviewer on your phone interview? This is really important because they don't want you to be done with the phone call and then be like, okay, bye. No, you have to seem interested too and you have to seem like you're thinking about it very seriously. Even if you know the answer to a question that you're asking, ask it anyway. So, I, oh, I'm cringing at this video. I literally hate it. But it's up there to help you guys. In my phone interview video, I at the end asked her if there's any meal plans provided for the people participating and no there's not but you could ask that too maybe something's changed i doubt it <laughs> um she was telling me about all the discounts the trivia and the dorms that you can win like grocery games and get free groceries or something which is really cool i think that's all i asked because it, it was kind of going over 30 minutes and she was like okay well if you have anything else I just asked one quick question and she was happy that I asked it and gave me a whole bunch of information so if you want to watch that cringy horrible video go ahead and watch it I'm sorry it was weird and then this person asks if I still keep in touch with my roommates from Disney and if any of them extended their programs so I loved the roommates I had I planned on living with them before I got there it was six of us we thought it would end up just being four and we all like magically literally magically ended up in the same room which was really great and we had an awesome time we did so much together we went to beaches we went to parks all the time we went out to dinner we went out in orlando it was really really fun but i actually don't keep in touch with them anymore after we left we just kind of went back to our own lives and we live pretty far away from each other and i still actually talk to a lot of the people that i worked with because i ended up spending a ton more time with them at work but I would not change anything for the world it was so fun living with them we had the best times the funniest times and yeah I will never forget it and as for extensions two of them actually applied and were accepted to extend but they ended up not doing it so extensions go out pretty early into your program um, so we started at the end of January extension applications went out about a month later so while you're still in your bubble of excitement and happiness and you're not too tired yet, they send those out to try and be like, oh, who can we get to stay a little bit longer? So, you know, they were both really loving their jobs at the time and thought that they would love to stay until July, which is what the extension went to. And they both got accepted for it. And it took a lot of thinking on their part, but they ended up thinking that they'd be better off just going home and trying to get a different job. So, it was, and they both don't regret it, I don't think. So, yeah. It's really, you gotta just feel it out and you can always apply and maybe you'll get accepted. And if you do decide you want it, yeah. But maybe you can always back out if you're just feeling a little overwhelmed by it. So somebody asks if they should take online courses and if it's doable and if I knew anybody who did it. So I did not have to take any online courses for my school because I already graduated a couple months before I left. and. I know a lot of people who were still in college and took classes while they worked at Disney. They definitely had a lot less free time and they needed to prioritize their homework and their assignments and their exams, whatever they had. But Disney is actually really good with this. Um, in your program guide, they have the whole education overview thing. So I didn't really know this because I, it wasn't applicable to me. But they actually have independent study hall and you kind of work with your... So it tells you that you're able to adjust your work schedule, most likely, to allow for consistent study time or assignment time. You have to do that online, I think, to see like what dates are available and like what times and stuff. It's all in here. You guys are all going to get this when you check in. Yeah, you just have to be really good at time management. This is available if you want to block out your time around your work schedule. Um, you might have to miss out on a couple things, but school is really, really important and you don't want this to set you back further in your schooling because that's just not fun. So you can do both and still have an awesome time because a ton of people that I knew did that and they had the best time ever. Somebody asks, where do the shuttles take you and are they convenient? So I really didn't take the shuttles more than twice, I think but they are very convenient. Their schedules run very often and they go to so many places that you'll need to go. 
I highly recommend downloading Crystal Rider, which is an app, and it's really awesome and it gives you, I'll put it up on the screen right now, it gives you all of the routes and all of the places they go, the schedules, any changes in the schedule it'll tell you. So it goes to places like the Disney parks obviously, Disney Springs, the water parks, it goes to basically every single hotel. I think it goes to every single hotel. It would make sense because CPs work at every hotel. There's also a route that goes to Publix, goes to Walmart, the post office, but it, it, the buses go a lot of places and the schedules run every day. So I definitely think that you'll be fine if you take the buses and they seem really convenient. They only leave from Chatham and the Commons and if you live in Patterson you have to walk to Chatham to get the buses, which is fine. It's really like a three minute walk and it's if it's raining it kind of sucks, but if it's not raining, it's fine. <laughs> Will I work in Walt Disney World in the future? So, um, I don't know. I've been really missing it lately because it's been a year and I kind of forget what it was like day to day. I'm just like thinking about the experience as a whole, so I miss that. But I don't think I'll be working at Walt Disney World ever again. I just, I like it more as a vacation place and it's always special to me to just visit it now. Um, I hope to work with Disney at some point in the future and acting career, maybe a show on Disney Plus, maybe um, like a ABC or Freeform I guess, or Fox or anything that Disney owns now because they own everything, a Marvel movie, whatever. <laughs> um, I'm just manifesting that out there. Hopefully I'll work with Disney in that different way in the future, but probably not at the parks again. And finally somebody asks if there were things that I expected that didn't go as planned, positive or negative. So I would say that I was expecting to work way more than I did. I only ended up working 30 to 40 hours a week, mostly 30, and I thought I would work way more than that. So I think I just got personally lucky at my location. That wasn't the case for everyone, obviously. So I wasn't expecting that. I also expected that I would, you know, like go out more or drink more than I did because that's what it was like in college for me, but I also wasn't working a full-time job in college. So it was, I did not, like go out as much as expected because I was so tired all the time and also to go along with that I expected to wake up so much earlier every day and just be out and making the most of the days that I had to work by going to the parks in the morning but you sometimes you just want to sleep until like 10 30 <laughs> or later because you're just really exhausted from the long days um, and the heat so <laughs> just don't expect to have too much energy and give yourself time to just relax and rest because you will need it and you'll get sick if you don't. I also kind of expected that I might get tired of like being around Disney all the time and there were some days where I was like, okay, I need to do something else because I'm just surrounded in this bubble of Disney characters and everything, but honestly it's just so nice and since I grew up with it, it was just like being a child for five months straight and I loved that, so it was really awesome. I hope I answered all these questions the best that I could, and if I helped you, please give this video a thumbs up. I could do a part two, let me know down below if you would like me to do that, but I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye!